Hey there! So, today I'll show you dynamic bones. Let's get right into it. So, over here, we have a little chain that I made already. Now, this, there's a big sphere here, and then smaller chains. Well, smaller spheres in the chain. Now, first, we need to look at the hierarchy of this, where we have our main parent, which is actually what has the grabable. We have our chain root, which has the entire chain inside of it. And we have the first sphere in the chain. Now, this first sphere here obviously will move everything because it is the first sphere and we have the smaller spheres beneath it. Now, if we don't want this first sphere here to rotate, we would have to set up this sphere here instead with the dynamic bones. However, if since we do want the sphere to rotate, we will actually set up the very first sphere with the dynamic bone chain. So what I'm going to do is I'll go into Attach Component, Physics, and we'll go to Dynamic Bones, Dynamic Bone Chain. Now, once I did this on an avatar with like a tail, ears, or hair, what you usually do is you click either Setup from Children or Setup from Children Rig Only. However, since I'm using an arbitrary object and I want everything beneath this chain, everything beneath it to be set up properly, I'll click Force All, just to avoid any potential for issues with it setting up. Now, once I've pressed this button, I'll see all of the assignments here, and I'll actually be able to move it around like this. Now, one thing to keep in mind with Dynamic Bones is that if we visualize bones and colliders, you'll actually have to adjust the base bone radius, because by default it's something like 0 0.025. This is not a lot, as you can see here. Now, this can be your intended behavior, of course, but in this case, we probably want these to be a bit more accurate. So let's actually adjust that base bone radius to the same radius as the spheres, which is 0 0.5. And now, if I touch one of these spheres, it'll actually move it perfectly instead of being a little bit weird. Now, next, you might notice that there's an extra sphere back here. Now, this extra little sphere is a terminal bone that is automatically created when you make a dynamic bone chain. But if you don't like it because you have your own leaf bone, or for example, you don't like how it moves with the terminal bone enabled, you can simply uncheck this box here. And now there's no more terminal bone. So we'll actually have our own terminal bone here now. Now, one thing to, one other thing to keep in mind is that generally, if you set this up on an avatar, people might get very close to you potentially, so their body could be colliding with it. Now, if this was an ear or hair, this would be pushed away from your head if this happens. Because of this, what I actually suggest is that you, on a dynamic bone chain, disable collide with head and disable collide with body. This way, someone very close to you can still touch it with their hands, but they won't actually move it around with their heads or bodies. It is also useful for when you have different sized avatars, for example, a smaller avatar and a larger avatar, and you're closer to someone's chest, for example, because otherwise their chest would collide with all of your bones and just push all of them away from you. Um, it looks very funny, but might not be what you're going for. Now, inertia basically controls how much force you need positionally here to actually cause it to wobble. The lower this is, the less force is applied. So if we put this to zero, it just directly puts in the exact same force that we were putting in here. Now, if we set inertia force down to a negative value, you'll see that it actually goes the opposite directions that it did before. And if we set the inertia force to zero, it'll behave exactly the same because all this does is it basically adds a little bit of a multiplier. So if we set inertia force to something like 10, then every little movement will actually cause a very forceful motion. So now if I move it up and down, you can see this. Now setting this to something like negative 10 would do the exact same thing, but in the opposite direction. So basically, this is how you can control the directionality. Let's set this back down to two. Next, damping is very self-explanatory. It essentially just damps the movement along the chain. 
Now, if we have damping up very high and lower elasticity to zero, we actually get this kind of behavior that some people might want to have, where instead of going back into position, your chain will actually move around smoothly like this. Now, again, this requires you to have damping pretty high up. Not too high, though. 100 is not necessary. Um, any, any amount of damping will pretty much do it. And to have elast uh, elasticity at zero. Now, next, if you want something that's good for something like tails, what I suggest is to have elasticity a little bit high like this, and then add the damping that slightly exceeds the elasticity, because now, if we angle this like this, what you'll get is this kind of motion where you have a bit of a swish, but it doesn't very, it doesn't go weirdly rubbery and start going back and forth. However, for ears, I actually suggest something else. Let's set this up like this. I suggest that you keep your damping a little bit lower than elasticity so that you still have the same kind of effect, but it's a bit more wobbly. And then additionally, I suggest that you raise the inertia actually to something like 0.8 so that they don't move as much from you moving around. However, if someone touches them, they'll still go very wobbly. Um, now, these are just my personal suggestions, but feel free to play around. Now, after elasticity, there's another value that is sometimes mistakenly used for what inertia is used for, which is to lower the amount it's a f you're, you have impact on when in motion, and that is stiffness. Now, what stiffness does is it essentially overall stiffens the chain. So if I have stiffness at one, the chain will actually not move at all. So it basically controls how far the chain is able to move. It's basically the rigidity of the chain. Next, what we also can set up is we can set up some gravity. So if you go back to our tail example, instead of having to manually angle the tail down, what we could do is we could add a little bit of uh, let's set this back up like this. We could add a little bit of gravity. Let's say something like negative nine. That's not enough. Negative 18. There we go. So if we add a little bit of gravity like this, we now have an actual droop. So it goes down like this. So now if we moved it left and right again, it would still have the same swish, but it would also droop a bit. Now, one thing to keep in mind with gravity Unlike us manually positioning the rotations, if we now rotate this, it'll actually still try to fall over, which is why if we put it on even straight, it'll still droop a little bit until it slowly goes back into position. There we go. So now if we have it a little bit offset from center, you'll see that it droops a bit more, very slowly falling over. And you can see that this line doesn't exactly follow exactly the same as it would if we did not have gravity enabled. Now, one thing to keep in mind with gravity, however, is that it does not scale with the size of the object. So if you have a very high gravity, if you have a very low gravity on a huge object, it will not affect it as much as it was when it was small. So as you can see, there's not much droop right now, but if I lower the size of this object, you can see how the droop is starting to affect it more and more. This means if you set gravity up on an avatar, you should keep in mind to potentially set up some flux that multiplies the gravity based off of your scale. And yeah, that's pretty much everything I can suggest about dynamic bones. The only thing left is if you want bones that basically just work for movement, but people can't interact with. You can disable dynamic player collisions entirely here, which will no have them no longer collide at all. And if you want them to be able to be grabbed, there's a setting for that here, which is underneath visualized bones, which is, is grabbable. And once you have that, anyone can simply grab these. And there's also slipping, So if you move it too far away, it'll just release. Now, all of these values for when it slips and stuff like that are also adjustable 
in here in the grab release distance. But yeah, I hope that this short little dynamic bones, well, not that short anymore, but I hope that this dynamic bones tutorial helps you set up dynamic bones. And yeah, if you have any suggestions for something for me to set up in the future, leave it down below. Otherwise, I hope you have a nice day. Bye-bye.